Welcome to the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast, where you'll learn the secret sauce, what it really takes to build a thriving mortgage business doing what you love, without relying on cold calling or annoying realtors. And now, let's join your host, Doran Aldana. Today, we're going to talk about the three types of fear that stop mortgage pros in their tracks and stop them from achieving their dreams. You know, I've been in the game coaching mortgage pros for 15 years, and I feel like I've had a front row seat to witness people get stopped by their fear. Yes, I also, on the flip side, get a front row seat and seeing what the difference is, the difference that makes the difference between the achievers and the mere wishers and dreamers who end up getting chewed up and spat out and never achieve their dreams and settle for a life of mediocrity and regret. So I've had a very privileged opportunity to be able to see what's the difference that makes the difference between the people who actually make their dream a a reality and those who just merely wish for it, hope for it, pray for it, but never achieve it. And I noticed that the biggest thing, the single biggest thing that stops people from their dreams is not their capacity, their capability, their talent, their giftedness, but rather fear. Fear that stops them from taking action. Fear that stops them from reaching for their dream in the face of obstacles and constraints. Fear that stops them from digging deep within their soul and getting that defiant resolve necessary to overcome the obstacles. And instead, they buckle like cheap lawn furniture. They admit defeat. They end up getting chewed up and spat out. Or they end up just settling for survival mode, in mediocrity, in stress, in worry, worrying where their next deal is going to come from, and be in that perpetual cul-de-sac of frustration, disappointment, and feeling like they're living a shell of their former self in the glory of their former self, and now they're sliding down the mountain, or just a perpetual boredom and perpetual stagnation being in the same spot. I don't want that for you guys. I want to show you the difference that makes the difference from the achievers versus the people who just merely wish, hope, and pray, but never achieve and live ultimately a second best life in regret. So we're going to talk about this, guys. And let's be real. Fear is a human trait. It's perfectly normal to feel fear. In fact, Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather your ability to overcome and to take action in the face of that fear. And all different cultures, all different backgrounds, all different genders and sexes and socioeconomic backgrounds and people from all different ages have all had an appreciation for courage because courage is not the absence of fear, but rather your dominion over it and your ability to show up powerfully in the face of it. Not be towed around by the nose by your fear, but doing the right thing and being valiant in the face of it. To feel the fear and to do what's right in the face of it, to do your calling in the face of it, to fulfill your purpose in the face of it, to serve in the face of it. And so today we're going to talk about what stops people from being their best self, stepping up in courage, stepping up in valor, stepping up in power, and living the best version of themselves and actually achieving their dreams. Well, There's frankly three different kinds of fear. And we can slice and dice these down into subsetting all day long if we wanted to. But I'm just going to keep things simple. Let's keep things simple. Let's just break it down to three, shall we? So the first one is I take a risk. If I take a risk, I might fail. Okay. So all of us have had experiences like that where. You know, even just taking my daughter out recently to learn how to ride a bike without training wheels. That reminded me of my experience learning how to ride a bike without training wheels. It was scary, right? So my daughter, we get out there the other day. It's in the middle of COVID-19. So, you know, we had lots of quality time together. 
And she wants to ride her bike without training wheels. So we take the training wheels off. And the first go she had was with her mom and her siblings. And she was not altogether all in. She was feeling very precarious, vulnerable. She didn't want to skin her knees. Uh, we even volunteered to give her extra padding. We got her rollerblade pads for her hands and her knees and the whole bit. But she was just really concerned about hurting herself. And rightfully so. She's never done this before. So she saw the risk and she was magnifying the risk and she was concerned about the risk. And her fear in that moment was, if I take a risk, I might fail. If I go out there and I do this, I might hurt myself. And again, that fear is healthy because, of course, we don't want to just be crazy and jump off a building. We're going to go splat on the ground. We don't want to go crazy when we just have never done something before. We've got to be vigilant and we got to mitigate risks. So she had a healthy fear. And if that fear stopped her from going for a dream of being able to bike without training wheels, she'd never have the freedom. She'd never have the joy and the exhilaration of riding a bike without training wheels. And likewise, this fear of if I take a risk, I might fail, can stop us from living our full potential, to live our lives to the fullness. And it frankly kills millions of dreams. Millions of dreams are stopped by this fear. If I take a risk, I might fail. Now, of course, we know the end of the story with my daughter. She did decide, you know what? It's worth the risk. The reward of riding a bike like my friends down the block and ripping around the cul-de-sac is worth the risk. So she ended up going out on a weekend with me. And I told her, I said, sweetheart, I'm not going to let you fall. I'm not going to let you fall. I'm there for you. Daddy won't let you fall. And so that fear was overcome by her trust that I've got her. But without that trust, what she magnified in her heart and mind was the fear. And until and unless she got to that trust zone, she was in the fear zone. And that fear was stopping her. Many of us are being stopped by fear in our lives or have in the past. My goal for you is that you will see fear in a different light today, such that you're willing to rise up and gain authority over it. Let's talk more about some of the fears that can stop us. The second fear is people won't like me or they'll judge me if I end up fumbling, if I end up doing the wrong thing, making a mistake, making a fool of myself, humiliation, embarrassment. Frankly, that's a big reason why I was late, a late bloomer in Facebook Lives, because I was afraid of looking like a fool, tripping on my lips, not saying the right thing, making an error. There's no safety net. What if I trip on my lips live and there's no safety net and people think I'm you know, just a fraud and they're not going to like me and everyone's going to you know, write bad things about me and blah, blah, blah right? So that's a real fear for a lot of us. What if we reach out to realtors and they think I'm a schmuck when I call them? What if I, you know, make an overture to an accountant or a financial planner and they don't give me the time of day and they reject me? What if I go after that big center of influence and I take a risk in the unknown and I end up fumbling and I look bad and then they tell everyone about the fact that I fumbled when I reached out to them and I was not saying the right thing in the right way, and I just totally dropped the ball. What if, right? People might judge me. I might look bad. Humiliation, embarrassment. That's one of the most powerful fears of humanity is being humiliated in front of others. And the third fear is I'm not worthy. How's that for a crock of shit, right? I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Frankly, I had that fear when I was a kid when it came to launching into my own business, I felt like I was too young. People were going to, you know, take what I said to heart because I was too young and they would discredit me. And I didn't have enough of a reputation. I didn't have enough experience. I didn't have enough acumen and expertise. And so I felt not worthy due to the fact that I was so young. So this is, can come in many different forms. I'm not worthy because I'm not good looking enough. I'm not worthy because I'm too young or too old. I'm not worthy because I don't have the right background or I don't uh, drive the right car or I don't, I don't live from the right side of the tracks or my skin isn't the right color or whatever it is, right? We come up with all these BS stories and usually they're planted in our heads just from the culture and from 
you know, the worldly sentiment that's been lodged in our brain in childhood, maybe from our parents, from teachers, influential people in our lives. And all of a sudden their program be becomes our program. And we believe these lies that frankly aren't true, but we believe they are true such that they stop us. They hold us back from our dreams and our goals. And they end up living in our hearts such that they manifest themselves as a truth that now we collect evidence for. Now we start to live our lives collecting evidence and adding beads to the string called this belief that I'm not worthy. But the truth is, you are more than worthy. You were knit in your mother's womb with a special plan and for a special purpose. And you're not only more than worthy, you were born with a birthright for abundance. You were born to win. You were designed to win. Any parent knows it's absolutely ludicrous to even ask the question, is your child worthy of success? Is your child worthy of love? Is your child worthy of abundance? The question is so ridiculous. It's like, what the heck are you thinking? That's ridiculous. That's such a stupid question. Why would you even ask that? But then we have that same erroneous presumption and assumption in our own lives about ourselves, such that we live as if we feel like we're not worthy. One lady actually told me recently, she didn't feel worthy of going from half a million to three quarters to a million dollars because her family said, money is the root of all evil. And to have more than you need is greedy. And that was stopping her for a long time. She felt stuck under this glass ceiling of, I can't go for a million. Half a million is already more than I need. I don't want to be greedy. And so these seeds of erroneous belief from her childhood and from her parents took and bore bitter fruit in her heart where she felt literally guilty for making too much money. And I asked her, I said, if you had a million dollars, could you do good things with that money? If you had a million dollars, could you help people out more than you are now? The best way to help the poor is not to be one of them. What if the greediest thing you could be is to put a stop to the fullness of the calling you have on your life? What if the greediest and selfish thing you can do is put a stop to the full extent and capacity of the calling you have on your life? And if your calling on your life is to spread your wings and soar, who are you or anyone else to stuff you in the chicken coop with the chicken yard and scratch in the chicken yard with the chickens when you're called to be an eagle and soar like an eagle? There's nothing wrong with chickens. Chickens are beautiful too. They're God's creation too. But if you know you're designed to be an eagle, if you know you're called to be an eagle, if you know you have wings that are designed to soar like an eagle, why would you scratch around in the chicken yard with the chickens when you know in your heart you're called to be an eagle? It's more selfish to think of yourself as small and belittle yourself and withhold your best self than it is to step into the fullness of who you know you're called to be, the fullness of who God called you to be, the fullness and the fullness extent of the full capacity of who you could be in your best self. And so it's not just erroneous that you're not worthy. That's not just erroneous. It's throwing it in the face of your creator and say, hey, I'm just junk. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. You know what? God don't make no junk. He made you in your mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. Embrace it. Let that sink deep in your heart and let yourself step into the fullness of who you're called to be. Who are you to say you're not enough? You're designed by greatness and for greatness. Embrace that and allow other people by virtue of your example to embrace it too. That's what this is all about. Because the truth is that fear is all, false evidence appearing real. It's false evidence peer, appearing real. It's the only thing that gets bigger the more you move away from it. And it gets smaller the more you move towards it. Coming back to the story about my daughter learning how to drive a, a rather a bicycle without training wheel. As I would walk very briskly right by her side to ensure that I didn't let her fall because I promised her, I said, sweetheart, daddy ain't going to let you fall. Daddy won't let you fall. You trust daddy, right? She said, yeah. 
So now I'm trying to keep up with her, right? And she's cycling away and I'm trying to keep up with her. I'm right next to her. I got my arms right there to embrace her if she falls. You could tell any time that her mind was fixed on where she didn't want to go, that's where she would go. She didn't want to go towards the curb. She didn't want to go into the gravel. Wherever her mind fixated on where she did not want to go is exactly where she went. And that is the law of attraction in action. Where our attention goes, our energies flow and our results show. So it's mission critical, guys, that we understand that fear is a real thing. It's a real emotion. And it's also a trick because the more you focus on it, the more it expands and the more it holds you captive in a prison of fear. It ties your wings and it keeps you held back and held down to be less than what you're capable of and to perform less than your fullness and your full potential and to live a smaller life than you're called to live. Fear, if you allow it, will hold you captive in a, in a prison of your own making. So false evidence appearing real is what fear really is. If you don't allow yourself and gain control over the fear, you allow it to imprison you. And it's mission critical that you guys get that distinction and start to exercise that distinction in your life because there's an amazing law called the law of polarity. Now, it works just like gravity. Gravity is immutable. It doesn't matter if you believe in it or not. It still works. You jump off a building, you're going to go splat. I guarantee it. Same thing with the law of polarity. The law of polarity is an immutable law that governs the universe and that law states that you can't have south without north. You can't have day without night. You can't have feminine without masculine. You can't have hot without cold. You can't have reward without risk. It's the law of polarity. Now, when you look at fear, you can actually use fear to your advantage if you use the law of polarity to your advantage. So when you look at those fears and you say, if I take a risk, I might fail. You can use the law of polarity on that and say, but if I take a risk, I can also be wildly successful. If I take a risk, I can achieve my dreams. If I take a risk, I can finally break free and break through and step into an amazing life, a glorious life, a victorious life. If I take a risk, I can achieve my wildest dreams. That's on the other side of the spectrum using the law of polarity. What about the other fear? People don't, won't like me. If I mess up, they're going to judge me. I might inflict myself with the pain of humiliation and embarrassment. Now, on the flip side, if you apply the law of polarity to that, you might say something and feel something very different, would you not? It might look like something like, if I take a risk and I fail, it wouldn't actually be failure. If I take a risk, People might absolutely love me. If I take a risk and serve my fellow man or woman, they're going to absolutely love the fact that I was bold and courageous and I stepped out of my comfort zone to serve another human being. If I take a risk and I go out there and try and get a realtor partner, I'm going to potentially get the most amazing partner who has great synergy with me, great rapport with me, mutual connection, mutual rapport and respect. They're going to send me all their business all the time, make me their exclusive, and it's going to be a richly rewarding relationship. If I take a risk, I can have that kind of reward. Notice the law of polarity, looking at the upside potential on the other side of the spectrum. What about the third risk? Got to love working from home with the COVID-19 quarantine. I got the four kids in the other room, so if you hear a little chaos cacophony in the other room, you're welcome. It's called working from home, baby. <laughs> Never a dull moment. So let's look at the third fear. I'm not worthy, right? You apply the law of polarity to that. I'm more than worthy. I'm destined for greatness. I'm called to greatness. God planted that seed in my heart for a reason. In fact, the root word of desire is of the Father. That means your maker, the creator of your soul, Put that in you to have it be fulfilled, not just to tempt you and tease you, but to have that seed of desire be fulfilled of the Father. 
to have that hunger be satiated with the food of the thrill of victory and success and fulfillment and achievement. It's there for a reason. It's planted up in you for a reason, not to tempt you or tease you, but to inspire you into your best self, to step into your dream, to be a conduit of contribution, to be a difference maker, to step into being the leader you're called to be. Using the law of polarity in your favor. That's what we're talking about here, friends. So the goal is not to get rid of fear. The goal is not to live a life absent of fear. The goal is to gain authority over fear, to have it under your feet, to no longer allow fear to tow you around by the proverbial nose, towing you around here and there, telling you what to do and what you can't do and what you're capable of, but to rise up and gain dominion over your fear, to have it under your feet where it belongs and to claim freedom. No one, I repeat, no one was born to live a life imprisoned by fear, to be shackled by fear. You were born, I was born to be free. We are children of God destined for a special purpose, a special plan, and to claim freedom in our lives, freedom to serve, freedom to become the best version of ourselves, freedom to make a difference in other people's lives, freedom to achieve our dreams, freedom to be a light in the darkness. The goal is not to get rid of fear, but to gain authority over it, friends. So to repeat, The words of the one and only Napoleon Hill, there is no failure, there's only feedback. There is no failure, only feedback. That means failure is about getting new opportunities to start again more intelligently. It's about getting new distinction. There are portals to be able to start again more intelligently and get new insight, new muscle, new distinction, to get stronger better, sharper, wiser, to become that better version of yourself every day, just 1% better every day. And without that feedback, we stay stuck in the muck and mire of mediocrity and stagnation, and we go nowhere. If we're not growing, we're dying. So if you want to accelerate the speed of your success, we've got to accelerate the speed of your failure. It's called failing forward fast. There's just feedback. Use that to build muscle. Use that to get stronger. Use that as reps that help you flex your muscle at a higher level so you can become the leader, the mortgage professional, the champion you know you're called to be. You're not going to get that by not taking risk. The biggest risk is not taking risk. The biggest risk is staying stuck where you're at. The biggest risk is stagnation. The biggest risk is drifting backwards. The biggest risk is sitting on your laurels and drifting and collecting dust and growing moss and going nowhere, stagnation, that's the biggest risk. If the one thing I would have you put in front of you every single day, tattoo it on your forehead if you need to, it's there is no reward without risk. And the achievers of this world, the achievers in this industry understand that the only way to achieve their dreams and their goals and to live a life of success and significance is to continually press into higher ground outside of their comfort zone and take new risks, not sit on their laurels, not settle into their comfort zone, but every single day having a culture and a rhythm and a fiber and fabric of their life inextricably linked with taking new risks. Because if we're not growing, we're dying. And there is no reward for expansion, no reward for becoming the best version of ourselves without taking risk outside of our comfort zone. So the biggest risk, not taking any risk at all. That's the big idea, friends. And until and unless we allow that to sink into our hearts and allow our lives to be directed in light of that, we end up settling for less than our best, less than God's best for us. And we end up settling for an anemic, comfort-seeking life that's unfulfilling because there's no adventure without risk. There's no thrill of victory without the risk of failure. The greater the obstacle, the greater the glory in overcoming it. You know it and I know it. And yet we forget about that in our own lives because we seek comfort and we avoid risk at all costs unless we allow our conscious mind to gain governance over 
and a position of authority over these fears, they will hold us back and they will suck us back into the comfort zone. And we end up getting seduced into the prison of our own making, seeking comfort, convenience, and trying to avoid risk. We want bold, intelligent, strategic moves towards our dreams and goals, mitigating risk, but not eliminating it and maximizing the reward. That's really what it's all about, guys. So right now, we're in the middle of COVID-19. We're still, we still haven't even seen the fullness of the wake of it yet. We haven't seen the fullness of the ramifications, the consequences, the impact of COVID-19. As the economy has screeched to a slow grind with everyone being in quarantine, you've got to be knowing there's a lot of ramifications we have not fully seen yet. I mean, we've been at historic highs with unemployment rates. The economy has been impacted significantly, but we haven't even seen the half yet. A lot of us are feeling uncertainty around that, and rightfully so. We can let that fear stop us, let us be governed by that fear, be towed around by the nose by that fear, stick our heads in our proverbial turtle shells, shrink back in contraction, and let that fear stop us from God's best in our lives and being the best version of ourselves. We can literally just hunker down, stack our toilet paper, Campbell's soup, and hope for the storm to roll over. But that's not how champions roll. Champions are always looking for the opportunity and the adversity. Champions are always looking for a way to take the resistance and use it to build new muscle. Champions are always looking for a way to take the risk and turn it into maximum reward. Champions are always looking for a way to take market share while everyone else is in contraction mode, hunkering down, stepping out of their way. And that's what I invite you guys to do. And if you'd like to take advantage of this unique opportunity, you gotta get armed and dangerous, equipped to win. You want to be counter-cultural and counterintuitive, while everyone else is stacking toilet paper and Campbell's soup in contraction mode, hunkering down in the proverbial turtle shells. You want to be in expansion mode. You don't want to play the turtle. You want to be the lion, taking market share, turning adversity up into opportunity, and zigging while everyone else is zagging. You're going after these top producing agents and getting them on board as exclusive partners while everyone else is neglecting them, not following the herd after rates go up and now you're clamoring after the same purchase market after the same prospective realtor partners along with everyone else in the crowd and in the clutter no that's not how champions roll champions are countercultural. they understand that if they want to be extraordinary they can't afford to think like the ordinary they got to be zigging while everyone else is zagging so if that's you and you are defiantly committed to expanding while everyone else is contracting you want to make at least $100,000 plus in the next 12 months above and beyond what your current trajectory is pointing to. You're a 100% commission mortgage professional, residential mortgage professional, making 80 basis points or higher in your comp plan. You no longer want to settle for showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife or head and knees looking for the sunset. You want to be equipped to win like never before. You want to take the shortest path to the cash because you realize that there are no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. You realize there's no merit badges at the bank for doing it the hard way. You're ready to Go the fast way, the expedient way, the smart way, and you're ready to kick ass, take names, chew bubblegum, crush it like never before. If that's you, going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. You'll get on the phone with myself or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough, by all means, we will show you how to do that. The smart way, the expedient way, shortest path to the cash way without messing around doing it the hard way. Either way, You'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll even have some fun along the way. So if that's meaningful and worthwhile to you, I invite you to book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So thanks for hanging with me. Dornell Dana, mortgagemarketingcoach.com, Art of Mortgage Marketing uh, fan page. Uh, we've got an amazing Facebook group, by the way. If you haven't got a chance to uh, join the Facebook group, it's the Art of Mortgage Marketing Facebook group. Check it out on Facebook, Art of Mortgage Marketing Facebook group. This is the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We've been talking about the three different types of fear that stop mortgage professionals in the tracks and stop them from their dreams. Don't let those fears stop you. Don't try to seek the eradication of fear. Gain dominion over it. You have faith, not fear. You rise up. You do the right thing and you step into your calling in spite of that fear. You realize that if you want to be a champion, you can't afford to eat from the bread of comfort or convenience. You realize that fear is false evidence appearing real. You realize there is no reward without risk. Bring it on, baby. As long as we're intelligent, tactically and strategically about how we navigate, we know that that 
risk is inextricably linked with massive reward. All right, guys, be blessed. Love you, appreciate you. Go out there, take massive action. Bring massive positive energy to that action. Chances are you'll get massive results. 